I want to congratulate everybody who has helped to make the day possible, starting with the folks at Navistar who invested in Wakarusa, Indiana, and made that sticker that says Made in Indiana possible. I want to thank the officials from the Department of Energy who may be with us here today for their wisdom in investing $39 million in this facility. We were thrilled to welcome the president to Wakarusa earlier, who fulfilled his pledge about uh, revitalizing the automotive industry by investing in new technologies. And so I want to thank uh, the DOE and the president for their support of this process. Let me be very brief here today. This is important for four significant reasons. Number one, jobs at a time when our economy is struggling. Initially, we anticipate that this will create 400 jobs. Over time, if successful, 700 good-paying permanent jobs in Wakarusa, Indiana. This facility is located on the uh, site of the old Monaco Coach facility, where we used to make recreational vehicles. Because of the turn in the economy and high energy prices, that industry has really contracted and taken a hit. But this formerly abandoned facility will now be making the vehicles of the future right there in Wakarusa, Indiana. So the, the automotive industry has a long and rich heritage in our state. We intend to be a part of the automotive industry's future as well as its past. These vehicles won't be made in Beijing. They're not going to be made in Korea or Japan. They're made in Wakarusa, Indiana. That shows what we can do to rehabilitate our economy and create jobs when we put our mind to it. That is a very significant thing, particularly with the economy being as uh, challenged as it is today. Secondly, and Greg mentioned this, uh, this is important for our energy future. We currently send way too much money to the Persian Gulf and Hugo Chavez and other places uh, for our energy needs, particularly petroleum. These vehicles will be uh, powered by electricity produced in the United States of America. The electrification of our transportation, both the passenger vehicles and our truck fleet, like we see here today, will go a long way toward ensuring the energy security uh, for America's future. So this is a major step in that direction if we keep going down this road. Third, obviously, these vehicles don't have the kind of carbon footprint that uh, traditional trucks do. Uh, this is a major source of CO2 emissions, the uh, truck fleet, automotive in general, the electrification of the, uh, the, the fleet, depending on how we uh, generate the electricity, can make a major contribution toward meeting the challenges of climate change. And finally, uh, and this was something that I was pushing for in the stimulus bill, was a 100% funding for these electrification initiatives. We gather here at a time, and this may be the most important thing I'm going to say, at a time when many people doubt our ability to meet the challenges that we face. They don't believe in Washington, there's skepticism about government as a whole, and unfortunately a lot of that is justified. But what we see here today is what we can accomplish when we work together to meet our challenges. Jobs for working Americans in the Middle West, a reduced dependency on imported oil, meeting the challenges of CO2 and global uh, climate change. By believing in ourselves and taking the actions that we took in the stimulus bill, to invest in these kind of initiatives shows that even though the challenges that we face as a society are great, so is our ability to overcome those challenges if we work together. That really is the significance of what we see here today. And again, I'd like to thank everybody for the DOE and Navistar, for the folks who voted for the stimulus bill to make these funds available for making today possible.